the the message was uh, very good and targeted, and it had a, and there were reasons behind it. Um, and the testing certainly seemed to have worked very well in South Korea and other places around the world. The thing that concerned me uh, was that the the speaker came on an hour before the president. And I think it's going to be very, very important that we hear some sort of unified message. The last thing I think investors want to hear is uh, sort of some sort of public squabble between the Speaker of the House and the President to somehow politicize what's going to be done or not done uh, when we really are facing a national crisis. And Mitch McConnell, I believe, thus far has called anything coming from Nancy Pelosi and team an ideological wish list. So we don't hear the Senate Majority Leader also talking in glowing terms about what may or may be not be coming out of the House. So it's going to be interesting if we break down again along partisan lines at a time where everyone has been calling for bipartisanship. That becomes at least potentially problematic for markets. You know, it's interesting and, and time permitting later this hour, we're going to be hearing anecdotal evidence of local municipalities, yeah. local businesses what yep. they're able to do to try and mitigate the the impact reassuring to Wall Street this has to happen and the more uncertainty and bipartisanship as Ron said isn't going to be helpful and markets won't take that well and Ron you know we all remember very well those votes in, in 08 when we were trying to pass tarp and all this yep. different legislation and it would it, and when they went down I, mean, I, I can remember staring at the TV watching that happen who doesn't, I was right? on if that you, TV if, yeah, if you when that happened. I was at a hedge fund watching them miss the vote are these analogies, and costing everybody an extraordinary amount of money. Right. So are, are these analogies useful? Are we all too much kind of living out of that playbook? Or is is this a moment to kind of meet the public where it's demanding you know, help and answers to this crisis? Well, I, I think both can be true simultaneously. On, on the one hand, whether, whether it's 1987, 97, 98, 2001, 2008, we had those unifying moments where, in the case of Alan Greenspan in 1987, came out and said, we'll provide all the liquidity you need, and we had an immediate response from the federal government. And that's been the playbook ever since 1987, for that matter. What, what's different here is you have two separate crises happening simultaneously, and so you need a health care policy response, and you need, well, three, really, fiscal and monetary responses. And so to the extent that you don't have a cohesive, coherent, and bipartisan strategy, you create a little bit more uncertainty in the marketplace, and it would suggest that maybe, you know, Wall Street could stumble through some of this until they get, as, as Eamon said, you know, all those I's dotted and all those T's crossed. By the same token, though, Michael, again, I don't want to harp too much on these local responses yeah. that are going on, but those are critical at this point as well. Are we relying or looking too much to a national overall umbrella response from the federal government when, in fact, they aren't the only place we need to look to get this thing solved? Well, I think your point's well taken, Bill, that we are seeing things on the more local level that seem to be effective and seem to be carrying some sort of coordination on the national level, I think, seems to be imperative. Certainly when you look at the results in South Korea by the massive amounts of testing that they did, and thus Speaker Pelosi's, I think, requirement for testing, testing, and testing, that sort of a message makes sense. Also, to make sure that our most vulnerable economically are going to be able to survive through this economically will be important uh, to, to, uh, to our recovery. But this doesn't uh, feel like 1987 to me. I was at my desk in 87 as well. I know you think I was too young, but uh, <laughs> it was not a happy time in 1987. But it was a big repricing, and there were excesses in the system. This is a different challenge, and if Mohammed El Arian's right that we do indeed go into some sort of global recession, there's going to be a readjustment of fundamentals that will probably match up with some of these lower prices. Yeah. All of this looks like it's going to take some time.